What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. It's pretty crazy to think that even though the Hearthstone development began a whole 8 years ago, there's still quite a lot of interesting tidbits and just random information that some of you guys might not have been aware of. Now some of these you might have already known, while hopefully some others might surprise you, but regardless, there's no such thing as having too much information and we can definitely learn something even about the most obscure things in the game. So without further ado, we're taking a look at some random facts and just some of the interesting things that we thought you guys might not have known about Hearthstone. So first up, we wanted to talk a little bit about Ashbringer, which is the legendary weapon that you get to equip when Tyrion Forgering dies. Now, Ashbringer is unique in Hearthstone in that similar weapons aren't actually legendaries. For example, Medivh also equips a named weapon when you cast him, his great staff at Yesh, but it's not actually legendary. It doesn't even have a rarity symbol. Similarly, Kazaka's potions, reform cards, Ysera cards, and all sorts of other really cool stuff and spells and weapons produced by legendaries are not actually legendary themselves, but Ashbringer is. And there's a lot of other weapons and spells both generated by legendaries and ones that are just cards themselves that are super important to the story. Whatever the case is, it's pretty interesting that Ashbringer has remained the only legendary weapon or spell in the game for pretty much all of Hearthstone's existence. Another pretty interesting fact is about the gold cap on accounts. Now there is actually a gold cap, there is a limit to how much gold you can have on a single account, although most of us are going to be a little bit too poor to ever actually see it. So the gold cap originally was 20,000 gold until it was changed in a patch on March 2014. Now 20,000 is actually a pretty low cap, although it wasn't at the time. It kind of is now, especially for people who grind arena and their dailies every single day and just save up gold and stuff. So Blizzard changed the gold cap to be 999,999 gold and you also get a warning once you hit 997,999 gold. Now that's a pretty crazy amount, giving you the ability to buy a little bit under 10,000 packs, and it seems a little bit doubtful that anyone would ever hit it, making the warning pretty funny, but uh, from what I know, there's been maybe one or two people that have actually hit that gold cap in the past, which is kind of how we know about it in the first place. Still with things like Heroic Tavern Brawl that give some crazy rewards, maybe we'll see a way to earn tons of gold in the future and people will actually approach the cap with a little bit more consistency. Next up I wanted to talk about a pretty interesting patch change to Shaman's original hero power. So people who played during the closed beta are definitely going to remember this one, but for those of you that didn't, Healing Totem on Shamans actually used to heal all characters, or all allied characters I should say, for 1 HP at the end of the turn, which meant that it also healed your hero as well. Now Blizzard decided this was a little bit too strong and changed it in a later closed beta patch, but it's pretty interesting to think about how it could have shaped the Shaman class today. It's a little bit laughable to think about making the Shaman class even better now, but there was a pretty good stretch of time before Tunnel Trog was released when the Shaman class as a whole left a lot to be desired, and it would have been pretty interesting to see how even a minor change like that could have made the class a lot stronger. Now the next thing we're talking about doesn't actually come from the game itself, but rather from the developer's statements during some interviews. And in 2014, the executive producer of Hearthstone said that, and I quote, achievements will eventually be added into the game. And the devs later reaffirmed that they are definitely still, you know, thinking about adding them as of October 2016. Now this is pretty interesting to think about because adding achievements to a game that's been out for super long is maybe a little bit awkward, but could be really awesome. And I remember when achievements came out in World of Warcraft for the first time, it was like, you know, a lot later after the actual release of the game, but it really changed so much and introduced so much more content to the game itself. And if they make the achievement system, you know, as complex and diverse as the achievements are in World of Warcraft, it would really just add so much content. And, you know, Blizzard's pretty creative and has done a pretty decent job with the game so far. So I would definitely love to see this come to the future. And it's actually pretty interesting that it almost certainly will, at least eventually. And next up, I wanted to just take some time to talk about the development cycles in Hearthstone. Now, with the expansions in Hearthstone, it's very often the case that, you know, the sets will be designed in a way that it almost looks like, or at least feels like, Blizzard didn't even consider what the current meta was like. And 
This was a lot more apparent in the Karazhan expansion than it was in maybe some of the others, and that is essentially because with the Hearthstone development team, the expansions are usually created about two sets in advance actually. According to Team 5, they are already working on a lot of future expansions, including not only the next expansions, but the one after that as well. Which does make a lot of sense, since they do have to take a lot of time to design an entire set, test all the cards, get the names and the lore and all the flavor and stuff right, you know, get the art for the cards, get the voice lines and the sound design and stuff like that and make sure everything's implemented correctly in the game. And this is definitely going to be the main reason why sometimes the cards they release in the set don't exactly seem to make sense when you take into account the state of the meta or maybe they don't make the weak classes a little bit better until the next couple of expansions. And for example, Priest could potentially have been really good when they started designing Purify and so they, you know, maybe made some weak or tried to make some, you know, more fun or casual cards for Priest two expansions in advance, and then with the next set, Priest became really weak, and by then it was maybe too late to change anything about the Karazhan expansion or about Purify before it got released. And this is pretty interesting and definitely something to think about before we bash on the devs too much about the balance issues in any given expansion, really. Either way though, that's just about going to wrap up our list for some things that we kind of just thought were interesting about the game. Maybe let us know what's your favorite fact that people might not know about Hearthstone in the comments section below. Either way, looks like that's gonna be it for me. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe if you want. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.